Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to episode 93 of 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. This week, I'm stepping away from real Amiga hardware and instead looking at the awesome emulation program Amiga Forever from our friends at Cloanto. Amiga Forever has been around since at least the late 90s. I think I got my first copy in maybe 98, 99, something like that. Used it for several years, absolutely loved it. For those of you not familiar with Cloanto, it's owned by the same people that actually own a lot of the patents and software rights to the actual Amiga software and hardware. In a nutshell, Amiga Forever is a front end or a GUI for the absolutely awesome WinUAE Amiga emulator. Now, from what I understand, UAE used to stand for Unusable Amiga Emulator, but now it's Universal Amiga Emulator. Now, let's be honest here and not beat around the bush at all. A lot of us, myself included, generally bought Amiga Forever and happily bought it just to get our hands on legal copies of the Amiga ROMs and legal ADF files of the Workbench operating system. I know I did that for years. For several years, the ROMs on Amiga Forever have been unencrypted and we could use them in WinUAE, we could use them to burn real ROMs, we could use them uh, for our WHD load sessions on our real Amigas. It was just a convenient way to legally have access to everything. And the ADF files that were included for all the different versions of Workbench could easily be converted into real floppies or just used in a device like the GoTech. As for myself, I would use the resources that came with Amiga Forever, like the ROMs and the Workbench, and I would just go over and put all those into WinUAE and create my Amigas right in the WinUAE interface. And I did that for years. Well, today I'm here to tell you that the Amiga Forever front end actually has some really cool features that are absolutely worth exploring. And you can actually use it to do almost anything you can do in WinUAE. Now, if you're just the kind of person that, that does not like to dabble under the hood, you just like to sit down and get going on some Amiga games or some Amiga productivity software, the Amiga Forever front end is the thing for you because it's easy to use and you can be up and running in seconds. You don't have to mess around with much of anything. Let's explore some of the great features that the modern version of Amiga Forever has to offer. Let's take a look at the main screen of Amiga Forever. Traditionally, Amiga Forever would list things in a clean text-based view. See the list of systems and OSs that are built right into Amiga Forever? Now, one of the new features is the ability to change how this looks. There's a new mode called Tile Mode, which shows a nice graphic representation of the particular systems. And you can add and adjust these, as I'll show you in a little bit. Our next mode is Arcade Mode. We'll go View, Mode, Arcade. This gives you kind of a, a newer style that you might see on a PS5 or, or an Xbox or something like that where you can cycle through the different systems right on here and it shows the images one by one. So that's kind of cool. Now each of these systems seen here represents the default configuration of a specific model or OS release. It's actually quite clever as you can easily check out an Amiga 1200 even if you only have an Amiga 500. The WinUAE architecture is very stable and does an incredible job of emulating software. Let's take a look and see how these are structured. Now of course we can just click any of these to launch them and it would take us right into the emulation and we will get there in a minute. But you can right click them for some context sensitive options. One option is play with which will allow you to launch the 32-bit version of WinUAE or the 64-bit version of WinUAE which is a relatively new feature just a couple of versions old. This allows you to have access to more memory than the 32-bit version of WinUAE. You can also use edit to change a lot of the settings in here, which is what we're going to get into right now. On our first screen, we can change the name. You know, you could call it uh, 10 Marks Amiga 1200 if you want to. The Extras tab has some useful features here, and this is where you actually set up and use the PNG files for the screen. That's this screen right here where you're showing like a little graphics graphic. Uh, representation. You can click add, image, description, document, 
an audio file, if you add an image, it lets you browse for a screen or a, a screen grab like a PNG file and use that as your thumbnail. And you can create these PNG files right from within the Amiga Forever interface. Now onto the meat and potatoes, or in my case, the tofu and potatoes because I'm a vegetarian. Here we choose the Amiga model. You see we've got Amiga 500, 600, 1000, 1200, etc. All of the standard Amiga models, including WHD load, which we will touch on in a bit. Now, each of these is context sensitive, which means if I choose an Amiga 1000 here, it's only gonna give me a choice of certain ROMs that I can use, and it's only gonna give me a choice of 256 or 512 kilobytes of chip RAM. So the, and also no slow RAM, no Z3, nothing like that, but you can add fast RAM, just like an original Amiga 1000. Now, if you want more control over all of these settings, you can choose this non-existent Amiga 4XXX and most of these things open up where you can choose fast RAM, slow RAM, uh, retargetable graphics, whatever CPU you want to. Uh, it does give you some options here. Now this is where my biggest concern comes up. You see here with this Amiga 4000 or Amiga 4XXX, I can change my chip RAM from two megabyte, four megabyte, or eight megabyte, just like we can in WinUAE, which is kind of cool to create an, an Amiga with eight megabytes of chip RAM. But I lose out on some other things, like I can't use my PPC down here, PowerPC, it just doesn't let you do it. Doesn't let you change and use traditional Amiga graphics. If I wanna do that, I can go back to say my 4000T, and I can choose PowerPC or uh, whatever graphics I want to, but look, I can't change my chip RAM. Now, in all honesty, this is why a lot of people set Amiga Forever aside and just use WinUAE. You can go into WinUAE, you can create whatever you want to. You, you don't have to have a specific name. You want it with eight megs of chip RAM, a PowerPC, uh, standard Amiga graphics, and uh, emulate a certain SCSI card. Have fun, do what you want to. And while you're at it, use whatever ROM you want to. You don't, you're not just limited to the Amiga 3.X ROM or like with a 4000T, you're not limited to 3.1 or 3.X. You can do whatever the heck you wanna do. This would be totally and completely 100% solved by putting a button right here that says, do it anyways. And when you do that, you could, might could even have a little thing comes up says, hey, warning, you're stepping away from traditional Amiga territory and doing something custom, but it just opens up every single setting on here and we can do anything we want to without having to fiddle and, and uh, compromise to be able to use these different settings. The goal should be to keep people using the Amiga Forever interface and not give them a reason to want to switch back to using WinUAE. Now this brings up a big, big elephant in the room, which is ROM selection with Amiga Forever. Each Amiga that you saw on the screen there has a limit to which ROM shows up. Amiga 1000, ROM 0.7, 1, 1.1, etc. Amiga 4000, 3.1 or 3.X, which is Clovanto's own custom ROM. Um, that's great and I get it, but why can't I choose whatever ROM I want to? Now notice there was no ROM option for Amiga OS 3.1.4, nor was there a custom ROM option. Now I totally get 100% why there's no Amiga OS 3.1.4. That's a, a whole legal issue about who owns the rights to it. Obviously Mike can't just throw those in there at no charge. But I own at least four or five 100% purchased versions of the Amiga OS 3.1.4 ROMs for my different real Amigas. Why can't I use them if I want to, to, to emulate my systems? I literally can't, there's no custom option. Now I have an Amiga 1000, you guys have seen it, and I often have my classic 520 accelerator on it, which has the Amiga OS 3.1.4 Kickstart ROM right on it. It's an Amiga 1000, I can use it all day long as an Amiga OS with 
This doesn't give me an option. If I want to do that, I have to choose a different standard Amiga model that is sort of like the Amiga 1000 and, you know, reduce the chip RAM and then I can use a, a different ROM. Just let me choose whatever I want to. Now this would normally mean that I'm going to take that Amiga Forever, that beautiful icon, let it collect dust on my desktop, and instead launch WinUAE, or I can do whatever I want to. If I want to use a, a customized ROM that I completely created myself, who cares? Plug it in. Do it. But does Douglas give up hope? Nay, nay. Now Mike from Cloanto, please cover your ears right now and don't pay any attention for like the next three or four minutes of the video, okay? Thanks. Now here's what we do. On your PC, just browse to your Amiga Files folder. Generally, you're going to find that here under Users, Public, Public Documents, Amiga Files. Okay, so browse to that path on your Amiga. Then you've got this folder called Shared and you've got this folder called ROM. These are all of the custom, or all the standard Amiga ROMs that Michael from Cluanto is providing us. Now, look here. I have put in a Kickstart A1200.46 ROM. That's Amiga OS 3.1.4 ROM. Same here with A4000. Amiga Forever will never see these in a million years. They will never show up and you can never choose them. So here's what you do you find a ROM that you never use. Now, honestly, how many of us ever, ever, ever use an OS 3.0 ROM? Never. So take it, rename it. In this case, I've renamed mine Amiga OS 300A1200.old, okay? So that is an old ROM. That's the old copy of the ROM. Now you take your actual Kickstart 3.1.4 ROM, right click it, rename and guess what you do you name it that exact file amiga-os-300-a1200.rom give it that name now when we go back here and we edit our th our little thingy and we go to configuration and we choose amiga 3.0 rom guess what it's using it's using kickstart 3.1.4 even though it says amiga 3.0 Okay, Mike, you can uncover your ears now. <clears throat> and that's why you should use the Cloanto Kickstart 3.x ROM instead of the Kickstart 3.1.4 ROM. Shh. All kidding aside, all we need to make everything in the entire universe good and right is an option that says custom. All right, when you drop down your ROM list, custom. When you click custom, opens up the uh, standard file requester, choose whatever ROM you want to. Hey, we bought the software, I understand. You know, we bought the software. Let us use whatever ROM we feel like using without jumping through flaming hoops. Problem solved. Back to configuring here. Okay, here we can choose our CPU. You can choose a 68000 up to 68060, which is great. This is available on most systems. You can choose whether or not you're using an FPU. Some, some chips, of course, have a built-in FPU, like the, eight, the 68040. You can also adjust just-in-time compatibility. So here it would emulate the actual 68040. Here, it's a little faster. Here it's as fast as the system can handle it, which is kind of cool. Now, depending on your system, you may or may not be able to add Z3 RAM. For example, if we go over to an Amiga 2000 and I tell it it's got a 68040, just like my actual Amiga 2000 has, it's got a GVP 68040. Well, I can add fast RAM, but why can't I add Z3 RAM? My Amiga 2000 has 64 megabytes of RAM. It can use it all stinking day long. Why do I have to switch over and pretend it's an Amiga 3000 just to be able to access the RAM? This is why we need a big button here that says do it anyways so we can actually directly emulate our systems. Now over here on the right, 
We can tell it that there, if there's a parallel device installed here, we can tell it if there's a serial device, like a MIDI device. Um, some of these are cool, like multi-tap joystick adapter. So if you've got one of the four player games like Gauntlet, you can do four player games on it, which is cool. Uh, SCSI device, whether you're using native or RTG graphics, of course, uh, networking, which is absolutely awesome and works transparently on Amiga Forever, and whether you're using native Paula or expanded uh, synthetic audio. Down here at the bottom, we can choose whether we're emulating the absolutely awesome and perfect North American NTSC video, or we can use the uh, you know lesser known and, and uh, not quite so popular uh, PAL video, so we can play the occasional game of Blorp Invaders or, or one of those other few PAL only games, or you can set it to automatic and it will choose itself. Now this next tab is critical as this tells us which floppies or hard drives to use when we're emulating. Now from here, like in this case, um, we can add something on DF0 like a floppy disk image and I could go down here and tell it to boot from a uh, particular uh, floppy like an ADF. Here's 3.0 workbench. Boom. Now my Amiga 1200 would be booting from DF0 with a 3.0 workbench disk. You can set up to four different floppy drives just like you can on a real Amiga. Here you can also set the ability to boot from a hard disk file, which I'll go over in a minute. There's a hard disk image file, a CD image, a directory on your Windows machine, which is great, or a disk that's directly attached. And again, I'll cover that more in just a second. You can also tell it to auto mount PC resources right here. Tell it to automatically mount your PC's hard drives, removable drives, network drives, etc. This is critical because we're able to copy over files from our PC right to our Amiga by just highlighting these options here and selecting them. Now this is cool here when we choose a directory. We can have, for example, an entire directory of WinUAE disks or files that are completely decompressed. There's some. And when you select it, it's now going to map that as an Amiga drive and all your WHD load files are going to be right in that Amiga drive. You can just run them and launch them as long as your emulated Amiga is using WHD load. Input is the next one we should look at. This is critically important because it allows you to use like a gamepad or a joystick, uh, which is critical here. Now here we've got port one is uh, standard as the mouse. Port two, you can have a joystick, gamepad. Um, and so if you have a real gamepad, like this image of a really nice 8-bit dough keypad that I got for like 25 bucks, it works perfect. You can just set that up here. Now, look what else we can do. We'll edit this and we'll tell the up button now does nothing, unused. And down here, we'll create a virtual button and we'll tell it, we're gonna merge with port, action is up, device is joystick, event is button two. Now, look what's gonna happen here. Built in port two, sorry. What this tells it to do, I've told it here to no longer use the up motion for going up or jumping. I've instead told it to use built-in joystick button two to be up. Now, whenever I play a game where you normally hit, hit the joystick up to jump, now button two in the joystick is going to work as the up button. Really, really, really quite useful. So we've learned a little bit about how we can use the built-in setups for the various Amiga models on Amiga Forever. Have some fun with it. Uh, add in things like ADF files. Add in things like uh, directories for a WHD load. But if you've got a real Amiga at home, what are the practical uses of this? Well, almost all of us use these little CF cards to work as hard drives in our Amigas. I guess probably 80% of us do that. 
If you have a real hard drive, this works too. You just need to grab one of those IDE to USB interfaces off of Amazon. But look what you can do with these little beauties. First, grab your drive from your Amiga, and then you can use a CF card reader, uh, like I've got shown in the picture up there. Plug it into your PC. When it asks you to format the disk, please do not format it or you will have just destroyed your Amiga disk. Just click cancel out of here. Now, what we can do is we can go into the tools menu. We can go into disk toolbox. And this is going to give us some cool options here. First, it's going to locate our Amiga disks. Once it finds them, say it's found disk three, my four gigabyte CF card, it even says, oh, I found DH0 and DH1 on there. Show Amiga disks, that's what we want. And we're going to create an image from this. So click the little buttons here, tell it where you want to create the image. I'm going to create a folder called A1200 2. And then inside that folder, give it a name. We're gonna call it A1200-2 just for laughs. It creates it as an Amiga HDF or hard disk file. We're gonna click save. Now, as soon as I create, click on create image here, it's going to read that actual Amiga disk and it's going to create an HDF file out of it. And presto, you've just backed up your Amiga. Now this can take some time. If you've got a 16 gig or a 32 gig uh, CF card is gonna take some time to do it, like minutes to maybe an hour or so. So you just go ahead and click create image and then click close when you're done and it will have created an HDF file. Here's the one that I've already created here. In this folder, I've got my A1200. This is one I created the other day. Go in here, there's my 16 gigabyte Amiga 1200 image that I created the other day. Now here, I created an Amiga 1200 that very, very much emulates the one that I use in the other room. When we look at it here, we'll look at the configuration. Oh look, it's using Amiga 3.0, wink, wink. It's got a 68040, I've got just in time enabled, no additional fast RAM, but 64 megabytes of 32-bit Z3 RAM, just like my real one does, using the native video modes, using native Paula. I don't have anything else set up there. Under media, if we look here under media, I've got a hard disk image and I chose my ADF, my HDF file right here. Now this next thing is critical, location. If you click embedded, when you create this, when you click OK and create this, if you click embedded, it's going to try and embed that 16 gigabyte HDF file into the portable R9 file that Amiga Forever uses. And it ain't gonna work because I think there's a physical limit of four gigs on those files. It's just not gonna work. So what you wanna do when you're using HDF files is choose location, external. This is going to keep that HDF, that large HDF image, separate from the R9 file that's created and it's going to work just beautifully. We're going to click OK and of course you can tell it what kind of joystick you're using here. Click OK again. Now when we click this, it's going to go ahead and launch my Amiga 1200. Now it's actually launched and this is exactly what my Amiga 1200 looks like on my actual Amiga 1200, which is awesome. I can go in here, I can use any of my programs. You can launch uh, Deluxe Paint, works just great. And we'll find a nice mode here. That's NTSC. Deluxe Paint, working happy as a clam here. It even supports screen dragging, which is kind of cool. We're gonna launch Art Department Professional here. Pull up a nice JPEG image.
brings the images right up. Works perfectly, exactly the same as if I was running on my Amiga 1200. Now let's take a look at how this little guy performs. We're going to go and run a little sysinfo on this little beauty. And speed, computing speed. I've got just-in-time processing enabled, I believe, so this should actually be quite fla fast. Yeah, 542,000 drive stones, 566, uh, oh my goodness, yeah, that's a fast little Amiga right there. All of it virtual. Now here also, you're going to see that I have mapped all of my standard PC hard drives on here. So if I want to go and look on my spinning disk and see what's on my PC, I can do that all day long. Show name, show all files. There's what's on my PC disk. And I can take these, drag and drop, copy anything I want to right over to my Amiga using the standard Amiga uh, interface or the CLI or any other utility you want to, to, to move files back and forth. Now here's another cool feature. I can go back and edit my Amiga 1200 again. I can go into my media window. I can remove this, add another one. This time tell it direct attached disk. All right, what disk do I want to use? Well, I want to use this four gig CF card that has my alternate operating system on it. Now I've told it to boot directly off a disk that's physically attached to the PC, not using an HDF file. Now this one is actually based on uh, the Amiga 3.1 Kickstart ROM, so I'm going to change that to Amiga Kickstart uh, 3.1. And now when I launch it, it should launch it right up. Here it is, and it is physically running this right off of my CF card, no HDF file involved. It still sees all of my uh, actual disks right on my PC here. So super de duper easy to actually go in and copy things directly to my CF card, pop this back into my Amiga 1200, and all the files would be there. So we've got, uh, let's go, the Amiga folder, I bet I have stuff in here. Uh, here's AGA Blaster. Yep, I'm gonna drag and drop AGA Blaster to my work folder. Now when I put this back in my original A1200, I just put the CF card in there, AGA Blaster is gonna be right in my work folder. Pretty darn cool. Now, let's take a look at games on Amiga Forever because who doesn't like games? Let's take a peek at how they work. On Amiga Forever, just go to this little button right here, drop it down, you can switch to the games folder. And you can see there are an absolute truckload of games that are included right with your Amiga Forever. And apparently these are all uh, fully licensed and ready to go. Let's take a look at how they're configured. We're gonna jump over to Z. We're gonna look at one of my favorite games, Zoom. We're going to edit it. And we're gonna look at the configuration. Amiga 500, Kickstart ROM 1.2, media is the Zoom ADF on DF0. So all of these games are just using nice ADF files, which works out really, really good. You can just click them, launch them, and away they go. Here we've got Zoom up and running, and you can see she works just and she works and sounds just perfect. Kind of like a mix of Pac-Man and Kicks. This has been this was one of my favorite games. We and I died. Now when you hit Escape on Amiga Forever. It brings up this interface here. This button 
will take a screen capture of the current screen. This is perfect for making those PNG files to use as your screen on the arcade mode. Okay, here you can control the volume. Here you can click back to, re to go back to the screen. Here you can stop it. Here you can save a snapshot of what you're doing. Adjust your keyboard settings here for the virtual keyboard. You can adjust your mouse settings. So you can tell it that in, in the normal mouse port, instead, we're using a joystick now. Boom, we're using a joystick. You can also change your joystick settings here to use cursor keys instead of the joystick. No problem at all. Kind of useful. Now let's take a look at one of them that I'd set up, which of course is the awesome Wiz game that came out from our friends a couple of months back. We're going to take a look at how I set this up. Uh, I set this up using an Amiga 1200, using the 3.1 ROMs with an O20. I gave it some extra RAM just to give it a little bit of extra oomph. Under Media, I told it in DF0, put in Disk 1. I also told it to recognize Disk 2. Under Input, I told it to use a joystick. I edited the joystick, so Up is now disabled. And under virtual buttons, I told it merge with the port, built-in port 2. I told it button 2 to work as up instead. So now, when we launch our little buddy Wiz here, we're going to go ahead and launch it up. Now here's something curious with Wiz, all right? You see it's asking for disk 2 into DF0. Now, in 1986, this might have been acceptable that it did not recognize the fact that we've got two floppy drives, DF0 and DF1. But in 2021, there's no excuse for this. But hit escape, click the disk icon, insert Wiz Disk 2, because I already told it to use Disk 2 as an option. Now we do Disk 2, press the fire button, and it will launch the Wiz game. Now, on Wiz, I can hit button one to shoot away, evil worm. And I can hit button two to jump. Whee! Makes Wiz a whole lot more fun to play when you have two buttons on it. Die, mushroom. And I did a review on this awesome Wiz game a couple of months back with my son. Take a look at the link that I've got right up on the screen right now and give that a watch. Now I also have the brand new NVIDIA game that was just released a week or two ago. If you want to create a virtual uh, session of that, we're gonna click New, Amiga, and we're gonna call this NVIDIA. We're going to tell it that it is a CD32, all right? And we're gonna give it some extra fast RAM just for laughs. We're gonna go to Media, and we're going to add the ISO file. So here's a CD image. And now we're going to browse for that. And I believe I put that under Amiga, put that under Games, put that under NVIDIA. And there's the CD32 ISO image. Now, all you have to do is make sure that it's using the proper kind of configuration here. In this case, it wants joystick two. We're gonna tell it it's a gamepad, but watch what I'm gonna do here. Under fire button one, I'm going to click auto repeat. Uh, default is fine. What this is going to do is that's going to turn on auto fire on the joystick, on the gamepad, which makes NVIDIA about 50% more fun than it normally is because you don't break your thumb pressing the stinking fire button. Press. There was nothing. But now, Holy Play presents 
Tiger Skunk is not dead. Now, all I have to do is hold my fire button down and it shoots for me, which is absolutely makes the game one million times better. These little cretins try and get behind you and shoot you from behind. It is not funny. Now, let's reveal a brand new feature that Mike just came out with a couple of weeks ago. Let's say you're in your WHD load directory, like on mine, I've got it on my uh, Amiga folder. Let's say we've got a cool little LHA file with a WHD load program right in there, like Galaga 92. Look what you can do now. You can just double click it, it is going to create a profile automatically for that LHA file and jump in and let you run it immediately. You don't have to create a profile for it. You don't have to configure anything. It just reads the LHA file, decompresses it, and next thing you know, you're launching the game. This is actually kind of cool. Now, if only this version of Galaga 92 was even a remotely good game, I would be happy, but it just happens to totally stink. Our game controller. And yeah, this is probably one of the worst implementations of, of anything trying to be a Galaga game that I've ever played. Yikes. Now, in theory, this should work for any game that is in LHA compressed mode uh, and is in a, w a WHD load archive. Links and data disk. And away we go. Now we've got links up and running just by clicking an LHA file that actually launches Amiga Forever right for you. Pretty cool. So I find the LHA file launching uh, Amiga Forever works okay. I did run into a couple of WHD load that just didn't work. Like I tried Wing Commander and it didn't work. But then once I actually manually decompressed it and then clicked the LHA file, it did. So it needs a little bit of tweaking, but it works pretty well and it's kind of cool. Now. One thing is, is when we download these WHD load files, a lot of times they're in zip format, not LHA, so they don't work. Now you can of course always, like I mentioned before, decompress your WHD load files, put them all in a big folder on your PC, and then to just map that directory to the WHD load system that's so kindly included on here, and then use a program like iGame to sort them out, run them all day long, works perfect. So let's sum this up. Amiga Forever is a great program, absolutely fantastic way to get legal copies of the Amiga OS ROMs, Amiga OS software, and a great way to run your games, and a great way to back up your real Amiga systems. Thumbs up to that. WinUAE still has a lot more features. There's a lot more hardware it can emulate. Uh, you can tell it what custom ROM you want to use. You can, you can tell it you want your Amiga 1000 to have eight megabytes of chip RAM. It doesn't care. Amiga Forever works great right out of the box. It's got some great games that just launch like that, work absolutely beautifully. Uh, and it's really easy to get other ADF files to run on there. And even now, it's even easier to use your WHD load files with it. What would I improve? Obviously, I've already talked about what I would improve. Let us choose whatever ROM we want to. Hands down, make that a feature. Second, let us choose what our Amigas have in them as far as power PC processors, as far as RAM, as far as CPUs. Just let us choose whatever we want. Keep the same interface. Keep it where it defaults to an Amiga 1000 only having 512K of chip RAM. 
give us a button to override that if we choose to. So we can emulate a system that has an Amiga 1000 rejuvenator board, which lets us put one meg or two megs of chip RAM on there. Let us choose that, easy peasy. Or just give us a new Amiga option called Mega Amiga that lets us choose anything we want, not with the limitations of the A4XXX, just let us choose absolutely everything under the sun. It would take you uh, 10 minutes to add that feature, Mike, uh, easily 10 minutes. And I can do all of this in WinUAE in 12 seconds. Go right over to it, set it up however I want to. Again, we want to make it so people want to use Amiga Forever. Amiga Forever is a good, solid project created by a good, solid guy with good, solid technical support. He's very responsive to problems. It's great if you want to create a cool library of your ADF games and be able to scroll, scroll through them in the new arcade mode. It's absolutely wonderful. It's great if you want to back up your systems with HDF files like I went over. Beautiful. There is a digital version that's available that's just the software. It's very inexpensive. There's also a version that's available on DVD that includes some awesome DVD videos like uh, uh, Dave Haney's uh, famous video he did at the closing of Commodore. Absolutely worth it if you want to get the DVD and watch those videos. Thanks to all of my wonderful patrons. You guys are the best. If you want to join this prestigious list that's scrolling right in front of one of the cool Amiga demos that comes right on the Amiga Forever disc, uh, pop on over to patreon.com forward slash 10 mark. Join in the fun and for as little as two bucks a month, you can make this illustrial, illustrious list. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. So thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. We're about seven episodes away from episode 100. I'm hoping to have a nice fun one for that. Uh, please like and subscribe and please comment below and tell me how you use Amiga Forever or how you prefer to use WinUAE instead of it. And maybe we can get a list of, uh, of things that Mike needs to address to make Amiga Forever even more attractive and more people really want to use it. But until next time, this is Doug from 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast signing out to go play some Zoom.